they say that books are man's best friends this quotation has been repeated over a longer period of time and we can say that when uh, like we are very much depressed or we want any kind of guidance books are always there to help us out in fact i'm not talking about just the textbooks that we follow but also there are different kinds of books there are different kinds of novels or different kinds of publications and print material that is always helpful for us in order to gain different kinds of knowledge in order to get some kind of guidance or mentorship isn't it so how are you everyone so how are you people my all my lovely ignatians how are you all doing so once again welcome back on an amazing platform that is pw and this is your mentor your friend your guide or you can say your virtual book on all this side so i hope you are doing all good so why i'm talking about books because today's discussion or the video that we are going to talk about is all about books it's all about the print culture and how it took the entire world by a revolution can you imagine that just by the printing of books uh there has been a kind of revolution you can say that there was a revolution that was much fueled by this printing of books and apart from that when the book circulation started happening in the societies it also stirred up the mind of the individuals and people started questioning it rationalized the minds of the people people started becoming more aware about what was going on around them right so let's get Uh, start it because we are hopping into our knowledge express and what we are going to study today what we are going to learn today it's about very simple pointers that is the first printed books about the print revolutions about india and the world of print and how was print affected by the laws of censorship so get started because i am going to ask you lots and lots of questions in the midst of that and your virtual notepad that is your comment section is always there the link between me and you that connects me and you so that we can communicate in a more better sense right so let's hop in and let's get started so this chapter is pretty much important as far as history is concerned now lots of people lots and lots of people are very much you know disturbed with the fact that this chapter is sir very very difficult but believe me after today's videos first of all i'm going to keep it very short and crisp so that you don't get bored after watching two or under two and a half hours long video because it gets very difficult i do understand on your part also when you are running short of time so we'll keep this video very short very crunchy very crispy but at the same time we'll cover all the aspects of the topic as well as you'll enjoy learning this topic okay so let's get started with the very first and a very amazing point that is the printing the earliest kind of printing see when we talk about the first kinds of printing press right so we have three countries that turned out to be pioneer in this that is cjk that is china japan and korea so they were the countries which developed the earliest kinds of print technology now books if i talk about in china were printed by rubbing paper from 594 ad and on the both sides of the book were folded and stitched for example i am having a particular book here now the books will be printed by rubbing a paper against it that has certain kinds of prints and after that the books were stitched so that they keep intact together now if i talk about china for a longer period of time was the major producer of this kind of printed material now china started conducting the civil services examinations for its bureaucracies for example we do have civil services examinations in our countries to fill vacancies for the ias ips and rs officers in the same way to fill up the profiles for the bureaucracy the china also conducted such kind of civil services examinations when you all know that we need lots and lots of books because there is a huge syllabus if you want to crack the civil services examinations whether in india or any other part of the world which has a bureaucratic system so in the same way china also used to take examinations with respect to such kind of services and for that you needed some kind of printed material or study material hence the production of books was very much you can say that inevitable now so basically print was no longer confined to just scholars but also we can say that with the passage of time usage of print diversified right apart from that if i talk about the merchants who used to do some kind of trading so they used to use the print technology for collecting the trade information they had to keep their account maintain their balances right so reading became a part of a leisure activity that is a free time activity and we can say that especially the rich women they also started publishing their own poetries and place so we can say that a new kind of reading culture was being built up apart from just the bureaucrats who were preparing for the civil services examinations 
Now, moving on further, if we talk about in late 19th century, the Western printing techniques and mechanical presses were imported that further diversified the usage and the variety of print available. Now, the question arises, now this is a very important part, right? So, the question arises, this particular part is comprised of one marker. So, this is very, very important, okay? So, hand printing technology was introduced by Buddhist missionaries from China into Japan around the area uh, around the date of 768 to 770 now the question in the question paper is asked in this manner that who introduced the hand printing technology in japan so your answer should be the buddhist missionaries now which is the oldest printed uh, uh, buddhist book so that is the buddhist diamond sutra the question is there that which is the oldest japanese book right so you need to answer that that is the buddhist diamond sutra that was published back in ad 868 now what does it contain it contains six sheets of pages you can say it contains six uh, six pages in the entire book that has woodcut illustrations now what are woodcut illustrations now basically illustrations are some kind of pictures or imagery right so such kind of illustrations have been made in this diamond sutra but that have been with the help of the wood blocks okay so earlier what used to happen they used to be images printed on a wood block and that used to be pressed against the paper and that impression was again registered on the paper so that is how it used to be done so, printing of this visual material, it led to interesting practices. For example, in the late 19th century, there were great collections of paintings that depicted a beautiful urban culture. There were libraries, there were bookstores, okay, that were packed with so many hand printed materials of different types. In fact, playing cards, you know, musical instruments. So, lots and lots of imagery was being printed on that books and people came to gradually recognize the importance of them. People started reading them in the free time because in those period of times, you know, we didn't have Instagram or WhatsApp or Facebook so that we can post our stories there. So, but we did have books at those times and these books interestingly became a great part of the leisure or the free time of the people. Now, if we talk about who introduced, now this question is again very important that who introduced print to Europe. So, it was Marco Polo. So, Marco Polo, he was an Italian explorer. So, he when he returned back to Europe after exploring China, along with him, he brought the knowledge of woodblock printing. Again, I told you what is a woodblock. So, block is a kind of, you can say a piece of wood on which we have made some designs or illustrations. Okay, now we dip that in ink and then against the paper, we rub it or we press it. So, the impressions are registered on the paper. So, that kind of technology is woodblock printing. So, this technology was transported to Europe from China by Marco Polo, who was an Italian explorer. Now, gradually, the demand of books started increasing as the booksellers, they started exporting books to the different countries. So, demand increasing, demand increased. So, in fact, you can say the profit of the booksellers also increased. But we can say that whatever the handwritten manuscripts were available, they could not satisfy the ever-increasing demands. Right. So, we see that in Europe, the people widely started using the woodblock printing and they use it to print multiple things. For example, the playing cards, okay, or you can say the religious pictures with simple text, so, for example, now the breakthrough comes with the development of the first mechanical printing press that was done by Johann Gutenberg, right? So, Johann Gutenberg break, uh, came along with the breakthrough and he introduced the world's first mechanical printing press that is called as Gutenberg's printing press. Now, Gutenberg was a very much expert in polishing stones, right? And he used this knowledge along with the existing technology to develop something extremely new. Now, this first printed, uh, now this is again a very good question, the, which is the first printed book. So, the first printed book was Bible, the holy book of the Christianity, Christian people. Now, by adapting the new technology, we can say that the entire, there was an entire revolution in the way the books were produced. With the help of Gutenberg's printing press, the printing speed comparatively increased as compared to the earlier forms of woodblock printing. Now, books printed for the rich, you know, they left blank spaces because the rich people, they want something very different. They did not want something that everyone is having. So, what was done here? So, whatever, like for example, we have multiple versions of Bible printed by Gutenberg. So, the rich people, for them, there was a special space left on one side of the page on which beautiful illustrations can be drawn, right? So, such kind of things were printed for such kind of things were printed for especially the rich people. So, we see that in the 100 years between 1450 and 1550, the printing presses were set up in different parts of Europe. Now, this shift from hand printing, this shift from hand printing to mechanical printing is called as the print revolution. 
Now, this print revolution has a great impact not only on the kind and the varieties of prints that were available, but also on uh, you can say the social and political aspects of the Europe and the li uh, lives of the people. Right now. Let's talk about this print revolution. How did it impact it? So, print revolution, it was not only a new way of producing books, but it also transformed the lives of the people. It changed the ways, their experiences, and brought about lots and lots of social and uh, political upsets, you can say. For example, the Protestant Reformation movement, or it also fueled up the French Revolution. We'll get to know that later in the chapter. Now, when we talk about the cost of books when it reduced. Why will it reduce? Because now it is being produced in number, great number. Earlier, the number was very much limited. The demand was high, but the supply was very much limited. As a result, the price of the books was not very much affordable, especially to the poor people. Now, since the cost of the books started reducing that because of the print revolution, so markets were now flooded with the books that reached out to ever growing readership so basically what is happening earlier when the books were comparatively very much costly now as gradually when they started getting cheaper it was more accessible to the common public okay so this created a new culture of reading earlier only the elites or the rich guys or the rich people used to uh, were they were permitted to read the books or you can say they were able to afford these books but now the common people also used to listen to sacred or the religious texts which at times people used to read out so those those who knew how to read the books they used to read out these texts from the people for for the people who actually were not known how to read it or write along it okay so uh, in next case also they the books since they became cheaper so they were very much accessible to those people as well who were not aware uh, who were not earlier having access to such kind of costlier books right now before the print revolution the books were very much expensive but the transition was not that much simple because again we have a problem here the problem here lies in the literacy rates if we see in the earlier parts of the europe okay if you talk about the early centuries if you're talking about 13 14 centuries the literacy rates in most of the european countries were not very much high so basically the people who are literate enough who have the capability to read and write who can understand the language they will be more over the people the target consumers to whom you can sell out the books so printers they started publishing popular ballets and folk tales illustrated with pictures who could not read so oral culture entered the print and printed material it got orally transmitted now let's understand this line much in much detail see what is happening here suppose i am a publisher okay i am a publisher now i see that the literacy rate of a particular area is not at all good now in that case i have to sell my product i have to sell my books how to attract that audience i know that there is demand in the market people want to read the books people want to understand to them go through them but the only uh, you can say that only problem they are having is that they are not able to read it because they are not that much literate so <clears throat> when you talk about pictures even a illiterate guy can go out in a movie theater and watch a picture and understand what it wants to convey isn't it so in the same way they understood the strategy so printers of the publisher they started printing books with great illustrations so that is easily understandable the theme of the story or the theme of the book is much comprehensible or understandable to the common generation to the common people and especially the masses that were not literate enough isn't it and apart from that if we see uh, in many places the people who were literate they used to read it out to all those guys who did not know how to read so we can say that the books now were very much mingled with the oral culture what is, what is oral basically when you read out something when you recite something so in most of the places what was happening generally what was happening the stories were read out among the common masses of the common people so in this way the oral culture the books were getting transmitted very much orally and the publishers were very much clever you know you know why they were clever because they started publishing the local tales the folk tales and those folk tales are already very much common among the the large number of people and so when they were published in the book those guys can also relate with those folk tales and they could get connected connected with this reading public much easier right now let's talk about so when you're talking about the different aspects of the print the print also triggered some kind of religious debates and the fear that generated out of it like for example if i take the uh, very if we, if we uh, take the case of martin luther king right so martin luther king this one guy he was very much you know you can say that he was very much criticism uh, he was very much you can say that uh, offended or you can say he was very much uh, displeased was the kind of 
hypocrisy that the Roman Catholics were practicing in those times. Because we have, we have, we'll see that if you go back in history, if you go back in time, we'll come to realize that Roman Catholics, that's a branch of Christianity, okay. So these guys, they were very much dominating, not in one city of Europe, but the entire European continents. So especially priests belonging from the Roman Catholic said they used to dominate even over the kings. They used to overturn their decisions. So that was the kind of dominance. Okay, and they were trying to establish their supremacy. So there was someone who actually stood against this, and that person was Martin Luther King. He, cre uh, he clearly, he openly criticized the different kinds of practices of the Roman Catholic Church, which did not have any practical usage, isn't it? So Roman Catholic Church and priests in those times had got very corrupt. So they were moreover interested in trying to extract more and more taxes and more and more money from the people, rather than serving the people. So basically he highlighted the flaws of the priest, that were practicing that time, you know, the priests that were existing in those times. So he, he basically highlighted the flaws of the Roman Catholic Church. He protested against that. And this ultimately started, you know, a new religion that is called as Protestant religion. So basically the people, those who followed him, they were called as Protestants. And he started altogether a new movement called as Protestant Reformation. So earlier, when there was no print technology, his ideas were not circulated. But when the print technology came into existence, he published 95 theses that criticized the practices of Roman Catholic Church. And when this thesis, these books, they started circulating among the common public, people came to realize, they came to understand that whatever this guy is telling is absolutely good, is absolutely amazing. And then they started following him and supporting him in his cause. And this movement ultimately also led to division among the, uh, you can say, the Christian sect. So today we also we have Protestant, we have Catholics. So these are two different segments, two different groups. So basically the guys, the people who followed Martin Luther King and his ideals, okay, they came to be called as the uh, Protestants. So in fact, we see, we see if you talk about the Bible, right? So Bible has two parts, the Old Testament and the New Testament. So basically the Old Testament is that part of the book which describes the entire history before the coming of Jesus Christ, right? And the New Testament, it describes the entire history after the coming of Jesus Christ, what all transformations came about in uh, the Christianity. So he, this Martin Luther King, he produced his own version of the New Testament, okay, in which he basically simplified lots and lots of things for his followers and for the people. So this came to be, a, you know, turned out to be a great hit selling book. So print introduced a new world of debate and discussion. Printed books were not very much welcomed by everyone because especially those guys who are bluffing the people since a long time they will never want people to come to know about their intentions isn't it so that's why they did not want such kind of books to circulate among the people now there was a fear of spreading rebellion and religious thoughts actually these were not irreligious thoughts but the rational thoughts that people did not want to be circulated because that will question um, uh, you know that will question their power and no one wants to, uh, their power to be questioned by anyone and that was the major reason for example, in 1571, the religious reformer Martin Luther King, he wrote 95 theses, right, and criticized many practices of the Roman Catholic Church. So his textbook printed copy led to diversion within the church and the beginning of Protestant Reformation movement. Now, in 16th century, Minoshio, he began to read books available in his locality. He reinterpreted the message of the Bible and he created his own view of God and the creation of the world. Apart from that, this particular view that Minosio created of his own, it actually enraged the Roman Catholic Church. It made the Roman Catholic Church very angry because Roman Catholic Church has set some particular rules and regulations that have been mandatorily followed by the people, blindly followed by the people. So first questioning was done by Martin Luther King and second was done by Minosio. So he read the books available in his locality and found that there are lots and lots of flaws with respect to the rules and regulations that have been framed by the so-called, the so-called priest of the Roman Catholic Church. Right. Now, See, again, we are talking about those times. And I'm, I'm not saying that the, uh, you know, the entire segment was wrong. No, it was the people within those segments who were making it look like something bad. That was not bad. That was extremely good. So whatever has been handed down to the priest, okay, the, in those times that got corrupted. So basically, they were not following what actually has to be followed, but they have framed rules and regulations of their own. And because of that, the peoples used to suffer. In fact, Minosha was hauled up twice. That means he was, you can say that, summoned twice and asked not to continue these kinds of things. But finally, he was ultimately executed. From 1558, the Roman church started maintaining a list of all such prohibited books. In short, you can say, all those books that criticize their practices and rules. Now, in most parts of Europe, when the literacy rates they went up, 
Okay, for example, through the 17th and 18th centuries, the literacy rates they went up. Schools and literacy spread in different countries because of which people started reading more and more books. In fact, they wanted more production of books. So we see that as the literacy rates they went up, so definitely people are able to read the books now, understand them. So they are, their demand is definitely going to rise in the market. So other forms of reading, they basically were belonging to the entertainment segment. So now we see that books of the different sizes came into circulation. For example, there were uh, Bibliothic Blue in France. Bibliothic Blue are small size books printed on cheap paper. Then we have penny books that were sold by peddlers, like they were called as Chapmans. Okay, so such kind of different kinds of different sizes of books came to circulate in the market. Now if we talk about from the early 18th century, the periodical presses started developing that combined information related to current affairs along with entertainment. Now this is again a one marker question that what did periodical presses publish? So they publish current affairs plus entertainment. Apart from that we see that journals and the newspapers they also carried some very important information that with respect to walls, trade or developments in other, uh, other places. In fact, the great scientist Isaac Newton's discoveries were also published which influenced scientific temperament among the readers. So we see that such kind of scientists, earlier their works were not very much popular but after the coming of the print, we see that their works started getting circulated among the common masses, people started developing a st scientific temperament and people started discussing their ideas. So that's a great boon to the world you can say. Now. That's a great line, tremble therefore, tremble before the, tremble therefore, tyrants of the world, tremble before the virtual writer. Now, this question is asked at times, why these particular lines have been said. So, basically, Sebastian Mercier, Louis Sebastian Mercier, he understood the importance of the pen, you know. The pen is really powerful than the sword, that's a proverb in English and it has a reason. Because when you write, today also you see the power of media is immense. If something gets viral in social media, it has an immediate implication. We all have seen that, whether positive or negative. But social media nowadays is overpowering everything. In fact, in very recent times, we have seen boycott, Bollywood, boycott, Bollywood trend, right now. And that has impacted somewhere or the other the business of the movies as well. So we see that media always has been powerful, whether it is print media, mass media, or any kind of social media nowadays. Now, so books were considered as a means of spreading progress and enlightenment by the mid 18th century. Why? Because books had some great information that can really guide and mentor the people. So according to Louis Sebastien Mercier, he was a novelist of 18th century France. Okay, so he was a novelist, the guy who read, uh, used to write the novels. He said that printing press is the most powerful engine of progress and public opinions is that force that will sweep away the despotism away. That means despotism here means the kind of institutions that existed in European in civilizations in those times, basically the kind of, uh, you can say, monarchical systems that were not at all bothered with the welfare of the people. They were just more interested in filling up their own coffers, okay, and they were more interested in filling up their own welfare. So they were least bothered and they did not want anyone to question their power. So with respect to that, Louis Sebastian Mercier says that printing press is the most powerful weapon or the most powerful engine. And when people are getting enlightened, the people are getting aware, they will definitely sweep away this despotism. They will definitely remove all such kinds of all such kinds of rules and monarchies and their kings. Okay. Now, so he was very much convinced of the power of print in bringing enlightenment and destroying this despotism. Therefore, he claimed that Therefore, he proclaimed that tremble, therefore, tyrants of the world tremble before the virtual writer. So, he understood the importance of the print. He understood that how print can, you know, uh, cause resentment among the people, cause them to motivate against a wrong cause. So, this is the power of the print that Louis Sebastian Mercier understood. Now, let's talk about this. Historians have also said that print has been the reason that has fueled up the French Revolution. Now, why do the historians say that? There have been three major reasons that have been broadly classified. Now, this is a long answer question. How can you say that print culture created the condition within which the French Revolution occurred? So, now this is a long answer question. Again and again, I am mentioning. Please make a point of it. Please make a note of it that this is a long answer question. Let's, let's try to understand. Please do write it in the same manner. You'll score good points here. Okay, so print popularized, print popularized the ideas of the thinkers, the philosophers and thinkers, for example, Jean Jacques Rousseau, Charles Montesquieu, okay, Voltaire. So these were the guys who were criticizing the then 
you know, Louis XVI's administration for all the kind of flaws it was having. And with the help of the books, they published several books that circulated among the people and made them realize that whatever was happening with them is a kind of bluff that Louis XVI and his administration is doing. And people started feeling that they have been cheated. They started feeling that a reform needs to come. So you can say that their ideas, it fueled up the thoughts of the people, ultimately instigating them to fight and uh, create a revolution in France. Now, their writing provides a critical commentary on tradition, superstition. For example, Voltaire and Rousseau, they were read very widely among the people and people started seeing the world through altogether a new eyes, isn't it? Print created a new culture of dialogue and de uh, debate. So people, when they started reading the ideas, when they started understanding that whatever is going around, so they started uh, discussing among the people, isn't that this, this? For example, let's take the instance of the coffee shops where lots and lots of political discussions were being done. So these discussions have been shared by all together the printing, the new printed material. So by 1780s, we can say that lots and lots of literature was being published that mocked the royalty or you can say the monarchs and criticized their morality, that how bad they are, they don't care about the people. So such kind of resenting thoughts were already circulating among the people. So print helped in spreading ideas. Okay, so some ideas were accepted, some were rejected. So we can say that print created the possibility, it opened up the possibility of thinking very differently. Earlier, people were very much stuck to only one kind of thinking, that king is the supreme power, nothing can be done against him. No one should question his power because he is the ultimate. In fact, the king used to re present himself as a representative of God. You know, so that was the kind of aura that king used to create, but that was a fake aura. And that was being exposed by the writers or the influencers, you can say that, philosophers and thinkers of those periods of time, isn't it? And that's why, this is what instigated the people in France, or you can say fueled the France, French Revolution, right? So that's a nice question. Now, the time changes and we see that from the late 19th century, the primary education became compulsory. So in 1857, a children press was also set up in France. That was devoted to publish the literature only specifically target for children. Now, if we talk about the traditional folk tales that were gathered by Grimm brothers in Germany. Okay, so Grimm brothers were again a very pivotal point in this entire print culture. So rural folk tales were also acquiring a new form. In fact, we can say that women became important as well as readers as well as the writers. For example, we have George Eliot. Okay, uh, uh, then we have. Uh, George Eliot has been a very famous writer with respect to the women writers and there we have multiple multiple women writers who have show, uh, you know who have basically you can say that they have like very beautifully penned down the kind of ordeals that women were facing in those times and apart from that whatever problems that women were facing in those times so all that have been all those things have been very beautifully and very uh, you can interestingly penned down by the women writers of those times not only in the European parts but also their Indian counterparts have done the same right Magazines were published especially for the women and you can say that there were some magazines which are aimed at teaching the women how to be more obedient as wives and mothers rather than inspiring them to do something different from their pre-decided or preconceived roles that were set by the society for them. Right. So in the 19th century, there were lending libraries in England that became, you can say, that became a very useful tool, especially for the workers or the artisans or the lower middle class people who could not actually afford buying a book for them. Lending a book was comparatively cheaper and easier and also a very good source of getting educated and getting literate or you can say that getting more attracted towards the printing pub uh, pu public or you can say the reading public. Now. What are the further innovations? What are the other innovations that we come to know about, that we come to see? So we see that press now came to be made out of metal by late 18th century. Printing technology got further innovated. So during that century, we can see the power driven cylindrical press also were there. So that were not driven by power or electrical power. So that can produce more that have better capacity. That was perfected. For example, this question can be asked that who perfected the power driven cylindrical press? So that was done by Richard M. And this was particularly used for printing of the newspapers. Then we have the offset press. Offset basically which is capable of printing colored uh, papers or colored magazines, right? So this offset press was developed and it could print up to six colors at a time. So by 20th century, we have electrically operated press that again accelerated the entire pace of printing and we can get more amount of books in lesser number of times. So methods of feeding paper improved, the quality of the plates improved, right? Apart from that, automatic paper reels, photoelectric uh, kind of, you can say that controls, 
Okay, so and colored print started emerging in the 20th century. 20th century here we meet the 19th and the 20th century. Here we mean by the, the time basically somewhere between 1800s to 2000. Okay, so this was the time period when we see further innovations in the print technology that further led to much improved color variation, better quality of paper and better quality of print. Now, so we have done enough of the European part. So we were just discussing about Europe so far. Now it's time for us to discuss a little bit about our beautiful country that's India. So how did print come about in India? See India has been a country that has been a very that has a very rich cultural heritage. And if you talk about the text, we do have Vedas, we do have Purans, we do have lots and lots of literature already existing since thousands of years. But this literature, we can say that very not was not printed literature it was most probably handwritten handmade generally written on palm leaves okay or compiled in the form of manuscripts which are most of the time fragile so as a result what has uh, happened that uh, we see that we have lost lots and lots of manuscripts or they have got deteriorated over the period of time as the leaves dry up it gets very difficult or some manuscripts are even printed on handmade paper but again they are very much fragile and it takes a lot of pain and a lot of care to, to carry them from one place to another so we can say that improvements are definitely required isn't it so India is one country that is very much rich in tradition of handwritten manuscripts Sanskrit Arabic Persian isn't it so these manuscripts are copied on palm leaves or on handmade paper again I say that they have limitations so the production of these manuscripts it continued even after the introduction of printing technology but that was highly expensive and they were fragile fragile means they were very weak I told you what's the reason behind that because of the kind of quality of the uh, like uh, printing material on which they were written they were palm leaves they got dried it became completely fragile it got you know uh, wore off so there was no record left of the palm, uh, manuscripts in those times again then we talk about the handmade paper that did not have great durability so that also you can say that uh, diminished or deteriorated with the passage of time so these manuscripts are very expensive as well as very fragile so in Bengal if you talk about the students were only taught to write due to which many became literate without ever actually reading anything so students were taught to uh, how to write okay in Bengal so they got their education they became literate because of this so you know they might not have read huge number of texts but because of these kinds of practices they got their literacy levels achieved now if we talk about the mid 16th century, the first printing press came to Goa with the Portuguese missionaries. Now, this is a good question. At times, it is asked that who for the first time introduced printing press in India. So, they were the Portuguese missionaries. Now, who are the missionaries? They are those people belonging from Christianity who have come to preach the word of God. That means to preach about their religion. So, they brought the printing press along with them. So, we see that the Catholic press, they printed the first Tamil book in 1579 at Cochin. And in 1713, the first Malayalam book was printed. Again, the English press, it came pretty late in India. We see that English East India Company was the la last European power to arrive in the uh, in country. So it started big, uh, importing the printing presses from the late 17th century and then started publishing lots of thin things in the English language. Now, there was again a weekly magazine named the Bengal Gazette that was edited by James Augustus Hickey. Now, this guy James Augustus Hickey was a very notorious one. You know what he used to do? He used to publish the gossips of the higher officials of East India Company into his book, that is, or his magazines and, you know, journals and all. And once he was also called upon by the governor journal that why you are publishing such kind of gossips in your, this thing, in the print material, but he was least bothered. This guy was very notorious, that is James Augustus Hickey, right? So, advertisements were there, published in uh, this Hickey's, you can say that Bengal Gazette, and he also published a lot of gossips about the company's senior officials. Okay, so we see that by the close, by the end of the 18th century, there were huge number of newspapers and journals that were being circulated in the Indian markets. Okay, you can say the Indian society. So, now, again, so when we talk about print, whenever the print will be there, definitely people are going to read them, discuss them, debate about them. We saw that the print created a kind of uh, conditions of debate and discussion that also led to Protestant reformation back in Europe. Such kind of uh, scenarios were very much prevalent in India as well. Let's try to get into this. 
So religious issues were very much intense from early 19th century. People started criticizing the earlier practice. For example, the sati prata, the child marriage. These are some of the evils that were very much widely being criticized by reformers like Raja Ram Mohan Rai. However, he was also being opposed by some people from the same society. So there was a huge war of words going on between such kind of people, right? So we see that printed tracts and newspapers they spread the different kind of ideas. And this ultimately shaped people's opinion with respect to multiple social issues. New ideas started emerging. There was controversies between social and religious reformers. For example, and the Hindu orthodoxy over matters like widow immolation, monotheism, Brahminical priesthood. For example, if you are a priest, okay, so you don't should not get marriage in that case. Married in that case, idolatry that means worshiping of the idols, worshiping of the idols. So there was a sect that said that. God is present everywhere. Why do you worship the idols? Okay, idols are like just like the statues that we keep in our temple in our home, right? So basically, people started discussing about that when God is present, God is omnipresent. So why do you need to keep those idols in front of you? That that is called as idolatry, isn't it? Then people started talking about the widow remarriage. Is why is it not possible? Why is it so that if uh, the girl has to suffer, why the girl has to sit on a sati pyre? So all these kinds of debates they came into existence in the Indian society. So in order to present his views, in 1821, Raja Ram Mohan Roy started publishing Sambad Comedy, and to counter this in 1822, okay, so to counter this. So Sambad Kambadi, there was one more book that was being published that is called Samachar Chandrika. Okay, so that was being published by the Hindu Orthodoxy group. Now, apart from this, there were again two Persian newspapers. This question is also very much asked in examinations. That is Jame Jahanama and Shamshul Akbar that also started circulating in the Indian markets, right? So that was from 1822. If the question is what was published to oppose Sambad Kambadi, your answer is Samachar Chandrika. Okay, so remember this. Now, in the same year, there was again a Gujarati newspaper, the Bombay Samachar, that was being established. Okay, the same year here stands for the year that we just read previously. Okay, where have we gone? Fine. Yeah, the eighteen twenty-two. Fine. So there was again one more Gujarati newspaper called as the Bombay Samachar that was being published since eighteen twenty-two. Now. A seminary was established in Deoband back in 1867. Now, what is a seminary? It's basically a kind of uh, religious school, you can call, where where you st stay, study about your religion, become a scholar with respect to religion only. So, such kind of thing is called a seminary. So, it started publishing thousands and thousands of fatwas. Now, what are fatwas? They are like a kind of legal declaration being published by the Muslim scholars, where the community is asked to follow or not follow a certain kind of. Uh, you can say tradition or any kind of you can say instruction. Okay, so it told Muslim leaders how to con uh, Muslim readers how to conduct themselves according to their religion in their everyday lives, and that fatwas were also published to make them understand that what are the laws under Islam, the Islamic doctrines. Okay, now. This print encourages the reading of the religious texts, especially among Hindus, especially in the vernacular languages. Now, what does vernacular? Vernacular here means the local languages. Okay, so when there were multiple, multiple kinds of texts that were being printed in the local languages, and this helped lots and lots of people, especially the people in the from the Hindu religion, they were very much interested in reading about their religious texts. It can be the Bhagavad Gita, the Ramcharit Manas, or any other religious texts like the Purans and all the Vedas and all. So basically, the people were very much interested in reading such kind of religious texts. So we can say that these texts became very much popular among the people. Encouraging discussions, debates, and also there were controversies that emerged within the people or within the Indian society. So newspapers they carried the news from one place to another. In fact, the newspapers, like in fact, we have uh, one of the famous newspapers, like that is uh, Tilak and K, uh, this thing, Kesari and Maratha, that were being published by Bal Gangadhar Tilak, Bhiji Tilak, in fact. And these kinds of newspapers, these news articles, these print materials, they have also shaped our Indian freedom struggle. It won't be wrong to say that it had inspired millions and millions of people across the country to fight for the common causes that is making India free. So there has been, you can say that this, uh, the vernacular, especially the local, the print newspapers and the print material printed in the local mediums, it turned out to be boon for the Indian revolutionaries or the Indian nationalists who circulated their messages in the local languages, isn't it? So the print has been a great boon to the entire society, you can say the global society, right? Now, we see that new kinds of 
writings were introduced and people very much got interested for example in europe the novel a literary form was developed now what was novel basically when we talk about a uh, novel so novel is a kind of literary publication it's a kind of literature's work where it has a certain story that surrounds around a particular character okay it can be a hero it can be a heroine it can be anyone so novel is a kind of big story that surrounds around a certain character earlier times novels were published to basically highlight a po popular social or moral message so these kinds of novels become interestingly very popular among the indians uh, re read, uh, readers and viewers and as far as uh, those concerned in the europe as well right so when you talk about this we also uh, see that lots and lots of other literary forms like lyrics short stories essays about the social political matters new visual culture started taking shape by the end of 19th century so if you see that it all started right when we talk about china it started from bureaucracy books civil services books competitive books and now from there we have moved on to story books short essays type story books novels and what not in fact if we talk about the cheap calendars they were also available in the bazaars that can be brought even by the poor people to decorate the walls we do have calendars nowadays however they have modernized however we have google calendars that is a virtual calendar isn't it but we do have calendars the printed ones in our homes even today isn't that or on our office desk or anywhere on your study table so we do have those calendars nowadays they come in very beautiful you know decoration or uh, decorative uh, forms but earlier those time also the calendars they used to serve as a very good medium for people to decorate their houses because they not only displayed the information but they also served as a decoration pieces even for the poor of the poorest isn't it so they can also afford they were cheap calendars now we we'll talk about so these prints they started shaping popular ideas about modernity tradition religion politics society culture in fact caricatures the cartoons that we nowadays see in the newspapers especially the political cartoons we also see in our ncrd books at times isn't it especially the political science books such kind of cartoons and caricatures also started publishing in the newspapers that commented on the social and political issues and these kinds of publications they started circulating from the 1870s right now moving on further how do we identify the relationship of women with the print see women have been one segment of society that have been denied certain rights ever since ages thankfully not in the early vedic ages because in those times women were very much respectable in the society if you talk about indian so indus valley society that was matriarchal in nature so women were very much powerful dominant and you know in good situation in those times but if you talk about the times of the medieval ages women did not have a very good situation neither in european continent nor in the asian continents so women were somewhat said to be considered to be the subjects of you can say that people or segment of society who needs to be oppressed in very simple terms i'll be very brutal in this statement right so women were someone who were not considered to be equal to men however scenarios have seen change in the modern times you can say that much ahead we have come of those times but in those times whether you talk about the european nations or you talk about the asian countries the status of women was very much similar okay and there were journals there were books that taught women how to be more obedient mothers and you can know how to be more obedient wives i mean why why this has to be there why such kind of prejudices preconceptions in the society now there were women who started taking a stand against such kind of preconceptions and prejudices and we see that in the form of we have raj sundari devi okay then we have uh, so many people uh, who started writing against these kinds of injustices we have seen people writing about in caste injustice like for example jyotiba phule right he was a great reformer he uh, he talked about you know the caste injustices so lots and lots of experiences we get from the print itself that how the people they started you know they started shaping the opinions they started wakening up the minds of the people with the help of their printing material now let's talk about the women so women's reading increased enormously in the middle class homes schools were set up in cities for women journals started that carried writings from the women by where the women explain their problems their ordeals okay and it also explained that why women should be educated but there were conservative hindus that believe that literate girl will be a widowed one and muslims fear that education will corrupt 
will corrupt the women especially by reading the urdu romances so there were novels which were published in urdu that had romantic stories in them love stories you know at times also today also we talk about watching any such however now parents are having lesser control over the content that you watch over the web or offline or online in any mode because you guys already have smartphones with you and you know parental control as of you can we can't say that we do the parents really do have any kind of parental control over the content that you watch right so it, it might be explicit at, at the more at times you know we never know yeah that's a harsh reality of the modern scenarios because we don't have control over that no one has it so the point here in those times you know reading about a love story also meant a lot nowadays i see people commenting on the live chats at times you know in fact starting their own love stories on the chats however that's very childish and very immature at this age okay because it, this is a kind of time period of life where you feel have attractions and that is very biological in nature that is very normal okay but you know getting distracted due to due to these attractions is again very not very much not good isn't it so we need to focus ourselves in more constructive things because later on you'll get to realize that we really wasted our time in you know in those kinds of distractions that are really materialistic in nature and they don't find really concrete sense in our lives okay so life is all about lots and lots of explorations and things so as you grow you'll come to have lots and lots of experiences in life and with all the experiences that you get you learn a lot isn't it so and then you will say yeah sir you were telling us right those were distractions okay so uh, when you talking about the uh, especially the muslim community here so they were very much offended with the fact they felt that if women are reading these kinds of urdu romances okay they are going to get corrupt however if you talk about the conservative hindu society they felt that if they started reading if the girls will get educated they will get widowed however that don't seems any there's no logic in that isn't it now social reformers and the novels they created a great interest in humans uh, women's lives you know and their emotions if you talk about the early 20th century there were journals written and edited by women they became widely very much popular so in bengal if we say there was an entire area in central calcutta that is called the batla that was very much famous for the printing of the popular books if we see by the late 19th century now uh, there were a lot of books that were being illustrated with woodcut illustrations remember we learned it in china and japan how they used to use the woodcut illustrations okay in fact peddlers peddlers are the people who just you know sell these kinds of books uh, just by walking down the streets so these are called peddlers so these kinds of peddlers they took the book publications to homes you know it it basically they used to go door to door and sell out these books so especially the uh, women who were confined in their home spaces they used to read these books in their leisure time in the free time and this helped them a lot this inspired them a lot you know to raise their voice to raise their concern okay so moving on further how did the print impact the poor people because poor people are those segment of society for them it is very much not affordable enough to purchase a book or buy a book so cheap books were bought at the markets that is one way of doing it public libraries were set up that were located in cities and towns if you see that in late 19th century caste discrimination started coming up in many indian towns so i told you uh, you know moments back that jyotiba phule was a great social reformer so he started writing about you know gulamgiri for example jyotika uh, phule is, is a very famous book there is gulamgiri so in which he discusses these caste prejudices and the caste discriminations that were prevalent in the indian societies in those times in fact factory workers they lacked education they wanted to write about their experiences but many of them could not you know write about it because they lacked literacy however we have a very famous person called uh, named kashi baba in 1938 he uh, wrote and he published a book called chote aur bade ka sawal uh, he wanted to show the link between the caste and the you know the exploration about with respect to that there was one more worker who again published uh, this thing a book called sachi kavitaye in which he explained his kind of experiences that he had with respect to the society so that is again a very important a very important book that was being published in those times back in 1930s bangalore's cotton mill workers they also set up libraries to educate themselves where they had multiple books that were uh, sent out or given to the workers on lending basis and you based upon that they started these guys started educating themselves right now with this we come to almost the last part the ending part of the chapter that is censorship now what is censorship in very simple terms when there is government restriction over the kind and whatever you are going to print Okay, suppose there's a government, there's a country. 
where government says a particular newspaper office that you are not going to print anything without taking the consent or without taking the approval from the government. If there is something against the government, that is definitely not going out in the market. As you see in the cases of most of the dictatorships, for example, North Korea, right? So there even whatever is said out on the television that has been very much audited by the government, then only it's going public. So such kind of things are called as censorship. So censorship was not a concern under the East India Company. For example, the Calcutta Supreme Court, it passed certain regulations to control press freedom and in 1835, Governor General Bentick agreed to revise the press laws. Then, but again, there were some kind of restrictions that came later on. For example, Thomas Macaulay, he formulated new rules and he restored the earlier freedom. The freedom of the press, it's considerably changed after the revolt of 1857 because after 1857, the Britishers were very much interested in curtailing the freedom of the press because they knew that this press can be can prove very disastrous for them because it may lead to circulation of ideas that may again instigate the Indian public against them, right? So they wanted to curtail their freedom. So in 1878, we have the Vernacular Press Act that is again a very important. So it was passed. This was based upon the Irish press laws that provided the government great powers or great rights to censor or ban anything or any report that is not in the favor of the government right and especially written in the local language because local language was one medium that was very much acceptable to the common public of india isn't it so they wanted to curtail its freedom they wanted to stop anything that is going against the government especially in the local languages now Government started keeping a track of all such kind of newspapers that printed in the local languages. We can say that there were nationalist newspapers that were growing in numbers. In 1907, Punjab revolutionaries were deported. Right, so this was with uh, presented by Bal Ganga Tilak with great amount of sympathy. Right, in his paper that is Kesari, and which further also led to his imprisonment in 1908. You know. 1906 to 1909 was a time period when Swadeshi and boycott was going on in the country. So there were people who were deported from Punjab, especially the ones, the guys who were protesting. And this entire incident was very much, uh, very you can say, very emotionally represented in the paper by Bal Gangadhar Tilak, for which he has to also go to jail. Right. So we see that we have come a long way, and uh, the entire chapter, bacho, that is the print culture. It's a nice one. So I tried to cover it in a very short and crisp manner so that it gets easier for you guys to understand, isn't it? But that does not mean that you are not going to pick up your NCRTs. Now, what task do you have? Number one, you have to read your NCRTs, watch the lecture again. If you feel confused at some time, if you feel troubled at some time, you can drop me a comment section, drop me a comment. If you have any kinds of doubt, you can ask that in the comment section. I'll look over it, then I can answer you back in the same in the next upcoming video, whatever I'll be putting forward. Right. So apart from that, practice, you have to practice your NCRT back question answers. They're utmost important. You cannot skip them, right? Chapter is important. This is asked in the, uh, if you talk about, this is actually asked a lot of questions are asked from this chapter in the board examinations we will be coming up with that also once we are done with these one shot lectures definitely i'll be planning out something like an mip like in kind of you know most important questions kind of something like this okay so so that we can practice more and more from the chapters okay right so this is all for now this is all for now this is all for this video for this smart lovely short and crisp video hope you liked it and uh, we are going to meet you soon i'm going to meet you soon in the next video in the next class till then stay happy stay tuned stay motivated and remember that it is we that you're going to is the word examination we here stands for me and you because together we are we and we is always powerful it's always powerful than me and you isn't it so let's get started let's get moving and let's meet in the next lecture till then study hard and stay amazing. Bye-bye.